Hi folks, this is College Algebra Checkpoint Quiz 2.2. We're given a function f of x involving absolute values. We're asked to use the definition of absolute value to rewrite the function f as a piecewise defined function. So what is the definition of absolute value? The absolute value of something, u, is one of two things. It's either the opposite of u, if u is less than 0, or it's u itself, if u is greater than or equal to 0. So if I look at my function f, I've got two absolute values in it. I've got the absolute value of x and the absolute value of x minus 3. So the absolute value of x is one of two things. Following this definition, it's either the opposite of x, if x is less than 0, or it's just x itself, if x is bigger than or equal to 0. The absolute value of x minus 3 is one of two things. It's either the opposite of x minus 3, if x minus 3 is less than 0, or it's x minus 3 itself, if the x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Alright, now we want to simplify this formula for the absolute value of x minus 3. I can distribute the negative through and get negative x plus 3. And now I want to simplify the condition where that's true. So from x minus 3 is less than 0, I can solve this inequality. And I get that this is true for x less than 3. There's nothing to simplify here, but I look at this condition and add 3 to both sides, and I see that this is x minus 3 for x bigger than or equal to 3. And so what I'm going to do is go back to my formula for f of x and break it up in the places that these are broken up. I'm going to be replacing the absolute values with one of these two expressions depending on which region of the x-axis I'm looking at. Alright, so here's my formula for f of x, and then these are the formulas I'm using for the absolute value of x and the absolute value of x minus 3. Since each of these are piecewise functions, I'm going to be rewriting f as a piecewise function. And let's look at the, inner, uh, the real number line and look to see where I'm going to have to chop things up. The formula for the absolute value of x breaks up at x equals 0. So that's going to be one of the points I'm going to be breaking up my formula for f of x then. The absolute value of x minus 3 breaks up at x equals 3, which means that's going to be another place where I have to break up my formula for f of x. So f of x is going to have three parts to it. The first part is dealing with x's that are less than 0. So let's imagine plugging in, say, negative 3 or negative 2. If I were to plug negative 2 into the absolute value of x, which formula would I be using? I'd be using this one. So in my formula for f of x, I'm going to replace the absolute value of x with the opposite of x. If I were to plug negative 2 into the absolute value of x minus 3, negative 2 is less than 3, I'd be using this formula. So this is the formula I substitute for the absolute value of x minus 3. Now, after 0, I use this formula for the absolute value of x. And that's going to be good all the way up to my next breaking point, x less than 3. So now I'm going to look at numbers in this region. So the x is going to be bigger than or equal to 0, but less than 3. 
let's imagine plugging in the number positive 2. If I plug positive 2 into the absolute value of x, I'm going to be using this formula. So in my expression for f in this region, I'm going to replace the absolute value of x with just x itself. If I plug 2 into the absolute value of x minus 3, I'm still going to be using this formula because 2 is less than 3, which means I'm going to replace the absolute value of x minus 3 with the formula the opposite of x plus 3. Now, last but not least, we're going to be looking where x is bigger than or equal to 3. So let's imagine plugging in, say, 5. If I plug 5 into the absolute value, I'd be using this formula. So that's what I'm going to replace in the function f for absolute value of x. I'm just going to put in x. And if I were to plug 5 into the absolute value of x minus 3, since 5 is bigger than or equal to 3, I'd be using this formula, which means when I subtract off the absolute value of x minus 3, I'm going to be subtracting off this expression. So this is my piecewise defined function. We're going to simplify it here in a minute. But all we did is break up the x-axis at the points that these are broken up. And then for each region of the x-axis, I replace the absolute value with the appropriate equivalent expression. So now we have to, we'll simplify this. That'll be it for A, and then we'll go to graph it in part B. Okay, so let's simplify our f of x. Uh, this first expression, I'd have negative 2x minus a negative x, so it's going to be plus x minus 3. This gives us negative x minus 3 for x less than 0. Here we'd have 2x plus x minus 3. That's going to give us 3x minus 3 for x between 0 and 3. And lastly, we've got 2x minus x plus 3. And that gives us x plus 3. And that's for the x bigger than or equal to 3. Now it's time to graph. 